we can all feel it in the air. That sixth sense that makes you refresh your favorite lighting design forum a little more frequently. Uh, it makes you swipe your Instagram feed hoping that maybe, just maybe, you'll catch a new public MA3 version release announcement. And maybe it even keeps you from making some uh, more progress on your own show file, uh, simply because you just know that once you do that deep dive on that part of it that you've been neglecting, you'll get that notification. So for all of us who have converted to MA3 or are just getting started with it as a first console, Godspeed by the way, I know that I'm not alone in saying that there are some Primo features missing that would make our lives as programmers, designers, operators, and let's face it, lighting enjoyers so much better. So today I wanted to share with you in no particular order, my most desired uh, what features or changes, improvements, whatever you wanna call them, that I would love to see in the new version 2.0 as someone who's been using MA3 for over a hundred shows in the last year, crazy. I am bummed because apparently some people have had a chance to preview the new version in person at some trade shows, but as of me making this video, 2.0 is still unreleased to us plebeians. Now I do have a separate list of long shot features and a running list of bugs and issues that I've been writing down as I've been developing my own personal show file. But for this video, I'm just talking about the things that I want now that I think are realistic next steps for the development of the software that would make 2.0 that much more attractive. But if you're interested in a video about those long shots or weird bugs I've encountered, let me know down in the comments and uh, I'll be sure to get around to it in the next like three years or so, I promise. First up, this may come as a shock to non three programmers, but there is currently no special dialogue feature like we're used to in MA2. And that means that anytime you wanna pull up a color picker window, you need to have it already stored as a view or create a new window on the fly. Not a huge deal for the color picker since that window does actually exist in three, but what's less forgivable is that there is no shapers dialogue in MA3. That's the window that would allow you to see a two dimensional representation of the position of the framing shutter blades on fixtures with that feature. Thankfully in my line of work, updating shaper presets are not a huge portion of my workload. And in touring EDM, I'm typically only dealing with maybe a half dozen lights per show where I would even need to start thinking about bringing a shutter in. And those lights are usually all along the same line and in the same orientation. So it's not the end of the world for me to dink around with the encoder wheels a little bit for a rough shutter cut and throw in some frost and call it a day or night. Uh, still, it is crazy to me that this feature doesn't exist just yet, since there are so many types of shows like corporate, Broadway, studio environments, film, etc., that almost exclusively used automated fixtures with shutters. Okay, on to the next one. Upgrading worlds so that they can be assignable to recipe lines in queues. And I would love this one for my entirely recipe workflow that I've been rocking on my show file lately. And from what I've heard, this is actually already a feature, but it just isn't implemented in the user interface yet in a way that I would envision it. And regardless, in my mind, one of the greatest strengths of recipes, the ability to take simple things and transform them to the selection grid based on MA trick settings is also the greatest weakness when it comes to building a large show or programming a complex sequence like time codes. The streamlined workflow that recipes afford is cut short by reducing some flexibility when it comes to calculating the output of the recipe. For example, what if I only wanted to have a circle phaser applied to only the flown beam fixtures for a queue that I'm programming as part of my time-coded show? Well, I can either create an entirely different sequence just for this circle look and assign my flown world to my new sequence, but it wouldn't directly interact with my main sequence tracking like I would want to, or I would have to create a new group that only has the flown beam fixtures in it and use that group in my recipes. And at that point, we're just coming up with more and more groups for every situation that I could frankly just use a world for. That concept coupled with the options to either compress the grid in like an ad hoc manner for those fixtures that are included in the assigned world, or keep them as they are in the group's full grid and just 
like mute the recipe for the non-world fixtures. Worlds are such a powerful thing and I think we should flex them a little bit more in our recipes. Speaking of recipes, I think it would be nice to have the option to like toggle on a recipe mode where all of your programming would automatically be stored as recipes for future modifications or possibly implement like a, a pop-up option when you store a queue that could be a recipe to store it as a recipe. The recipe workflow is so cool. And I know there are many programmers out there who are using MA3 just like MA2 with presets or God forbid hard values stored to queues. And it would be a great feature to be able to speed up the transition for those people to three or to be able to race through recipe creation instead of always having to either navigate through long lists of pool items to fill the recipe contents or having to always be assigning separate recipe components to the recipe lines from other windows. It just gets cluttered really fast when you have a large show. Next up, layout views and bitmapping. Name a better duo, I'll wait. Yes, even with the implementation of viewable NDI streams in MA3, we're still holding short of that beautiful takeoff into the sunset that is bitmapping with NDI on layout views or just old fashioned bitmapping with images and video files. Hopefully bitmapping will make a comeback in both ways. The classic MA2 way of patching bitmap fixtures that use images with transformation and effects program much like you program normal fixtures and the added ability to use an NDI stream as an overlay. Bitmaps in MA2 are super powerful and in the end I would say that my final MA2 show build was about 25% bitmaps by volume. Really useful stuff. Now what if they wanted to go even further and be able to apply bitmaps to selection grids? Now there's an idea because I mean MA tricks and phasers can really only get so granular after all. Negative follow time. Yes, one of my favorite MA2 features also does not exist in MA3 quite yet, and I miss it dearly. And for those who are unfamiliar with negative follow time, it's a cool twist on the follow trigger type, which will trigger the start of a queue in a sequence a set number of seconds after the previous queue has fully completed. And usually most people leave this at zero seconds of follow time, which just means that the instant that the previous queue in a sequence finishes, the next one starts without having to manually hit go. It's super nice for cleaning up sequences and simplifying your playback, but I've gotten a ton of creative looks and cue transitions by using negative follow time so that my next cue can start before my previous one is fully finished. Grid pop-up window. I'm not always working with a large screen surface when I'm programming and sometimes I just want to take a look at the current way the grid is shaping up, much like uh, MA tricks or phaser window pop-ups. This seems like an easy one to add. Grid tools. The way selection grid currently works in MA3, it's really just a window into the selection order of what you have in the programmer like right now. The grid is cool uh, and it solves a lot of problems with non-standard fixture layouts by stretching your programming between different rigs, types and numbers of fixtures, but it really needs to be more of a tool for creation of those grids rather than a visualizer of the grids that you've already meticulously made by you know, clicking on certain regions and selecting certain fixtures, scrolling around, adding more fixtures. At the moment, all of the grid tools built into MA3 affect the entire grid at once. So those tools are very limited. And ironically, proper grids can actually take more time to create accurately than the time that they save with the rest of the show. The ability to take layout view positions into a grid, be able to lasso, select regions of fixtures in the grid, move them around in 3D space with encoders, you know, rotate only certain sections, mirror others, really anything that we can do in the layout views, we need to be able to do in the grids. That and having the option to use the grid with negative values so that you can always have you know, the center of your stage as your zero position on the X axis and then start with a uh, positive one and a or a positive one and a negative one on each side. Uh, did anyone else watch that Matt Parker video on the off by one error pyramid in the fence post problem? Germans and their math, I suppose. The ability to control the MA network switch in mode three. Really, how is this not a thing already? I've had to boot up MA2 on PC on my laptop to modify switch settings more than a few times in the last year. And it's just a head scratcher for me why this doesn't exist yet. 
parameter load bar. In MA2, we had that classic not enough parameters icon in the message center that we all know and love. And I think in MA3, it would be awesome to have a better visualization of our current parameter load for our requested universes. And MA3 already has a few new status bars in the command line slash message center area, one for phaser load and one for flow control, whatever that means. Patch obey worlds. It doesn't work in MA3 right now. And a lot of times when I'm teching a rig or making changes in the patch to a specific range of fixtures, it's much easier to enter a world I've stored to be able to restrict my patch editing to what's in that world, either for like pan and tilt inverts, repatching or other general troubleshooting. It's really useful. Auto create is really nice in MA2 and it's completely missing from MA3. Of course, you can create a macro that does everything that it does, but having a nice and tidy built in user interface and process would save a lot of time. Plus it really helps new users get started. Complex software like MA3 can really be a turnoff for people, even if they are technically minded and even a simple auto create groups and presets pop up window when saving and exiting the patch for the first time after starting a new show would be really helpful to inspire people to get past those first MA3 hurdles and just start creating. And while we're at it, why is it not possible to have fixtures share preset data between the different modes? Right now you have to clone and update them all separately even when there's no actual difference in the attributes used between the types. Yeah, finally, all of my Astera and Color Force presets could be unified into one fixture type. Updating patches and general PSR wishes. And this is a huge weakness for larger shows right now in MA3. You're basically on your own to do everything manually that you would normally do with the PSR process in MA2. And with MVR capabilities, you would think that MA3 would offer us more flexibility when it comes to updating the patch, either in part or whole. And that's just not the case right now. MVR export does not allow for exporting fixture types with the patch. And instead, dummy fixtures are patched and exported at the correct XYZ and patch values. I heard this is a legal limitation due to library licensing, but don't quote me on that, please. Uh, what I do know is that if you receive an updated MVR file for a show that you've been working on and they changed a bunch of patch information, there's no great method for simply updating your fixtures with the new patch information without overwriting the entire line in the patch or changing the fixture IDs of your already patched fixtures and then remaking all of your groups and then swapping in the fixture types. Either way, it's an arduous task. MVR workflow on MA3 right now is mostly an all or nothing thing and it always imports to stage one with no options for only updating changes to the fixture patch. And this is a feature that other software like Depends R3 has, and it would be nice if this was a thing in MA3. Okay, this one is probably my most desired on this list, cookbooks, where of course you keep all of your favorite recipe combinations. And hey, if they're going to go along with this whole recipe and cooking nomenclature, I'm going to lean into it just as hard. It would be cool to have a pool based set of recipes that you already love and use frequently without having to hunt through sequences to assign them to new recipe lines with one assign function with the option of retaining the link to the original or the ability to have single step presets as the source material for the recipe lines in the cookbook, like some sort of Franken editor between chasers from MA2, the form editor and the phaser editor. And of course the grid view. Okay. I'm, editing this video right now and realizing that I did a really awful job of explaining what I mean by this whole like cookbooks thing that I have in my mind. And I totally forgot to mention the part where this would kind of be more like the effect editor from MA2, but you could define the different points um, on the different attribute lines with single step, you know, non phaser cycle, single step presets, right? So you could map out how your attributes are going along in the, uh, in the phaser, right? By referencing other presets, single step presets. It, would, it wouldn't work, I don't think, with uh, anything more than single steps. But yeah, just like a, a really like super condensed, all in one place, like 
you know, you've got your command center for your, your, your recipe that you're making and you can quickly swap out attributes and then, you know, multi-select things and making it a lot more feng shui with, uh, with the recipes and the phaser editor kind of like combine into one thing. All right, back to the rest of the video, sorry. This next one I'm calling group propagation. Sometimes when the show grows, it's nice to incrementally add new things with the ability to modify just the new things and not any of the old. And in my opinion, this is a current weakness in recipes. When copying a group, the ability to auto copy all of the recipe lines in all the sequences or within a range that I can define would mean that I can instantly start going through my show and editing just the new content that was propagated. This would be like cloning and copying in the same action but all new information would be based off of a link to that copied group rather than just the original. I think with this feature, you could build an arena show out of a basic ground package in just a couple of days, as long as you've done all the time coding already. Navigation outside of predefined folders. It gets really old only being able to import, export, load from the predefined directories. I would love to be able to load MVRs from my Dropbox folder. And while we're at it, let's add the ability to browse show files on other stations in the session. Or maybe not, I, I'm not quite sure on that one yet, but still sounds cool. Off queue matrix. Since the off queue doesn't have values, it doesn't have enough information to calculate a recipe, but it would be nice to have an off flash matrix pool item that I can use to determine how my temp buttons turn off. You could have your lights delay on and then when you release the button, they delay off. I think that'd be pretty cool. Favorites pool. Okay, I think this is a fun one to think about for me because I'm always doing time code shows for new songs and referencing a lot of the same pool items over and over between different pool types. And when I put this wish in with Act Entertainment, I probably didn't articulate it too well, but uh, here it goes, let me know what you think. The, the favorites pool would actually act more like a unique window rather than a pool. So favorites pool would be more like a list of user defined windows where each one of those pools can have its own reference to any other pool, data pool, preset, whatever item, kind of like the quick keys pool, but for direct access to all types of pool items without rearranging the pool items themselves or windows on your view and still retaining the original link. So <sighs> imagine you're working on a song and you're only using a couple of groups, a couple of presets and making some multi-step one-off presets. And a couple of worlds are also really important when making updates to this song and during your overnight programming session. Wouldn't it be cool to have all of those things right in front of you in a window that's only 10 by two tiles and you don't have to have four different windows and scroll between wherever you've had them stored, but still maintain direct access to editing the original items. I think that would be pretty cool. And then when you create a new favorites pool for the next song, the process starts all over, this time on you know, favorites number two. All right, I think I've rambled on for a bit too long for one video on things that don't even exist yet, but those are the things that keep coming up for me every time I sit down at my console to do some work. And hopefully this may have sparked some inspiration for your own programming or even just the way that you think about how you program. Program epistemology. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. Uh, anyways, I'm super glad to be back on YouTube making content again. I really did miss you all and I'm excited for the next chapters going forward. Make sure to check out the links down below in the description to stay in touch with what I'm working on. And finally, thanks to all my supporters on Patreon for helping me fund this new content era. Thanks a lot.